Hello class, welcome to the lecture for 13-4A. This is probably my favorite topic in all of math. That this, this is my favorite topic in all of math. This is pure mathematics and the most world opening thing ever. That this, I, I love this topic so much. This is so cool. There is an entire series of classes in graduate school called complex analysis that this is the gateway, the opening key that turns the lock and gets you started on the most pure mathematical awesome stuff ever. Oh, I get goosebumps just thinking about it. It's so good. It's so good. What we're going to do is we are gonna take what we have been learning about polar coordinates and we are gonna apply it to complex numbers. Complex numbers are numbers that involve I and you'll see it just makes everything so much easier and so beautiful, it's stunning. Okay, so what we are talking about are numbers that have a real part that we'll call A and an imaginary part that we'll call i. And you remember that i is the square root of negative one, that this is this number that needed to be invented in the 16th century to say, all right, we know how to do everything except, except take square roots of negatives. We can figure out all the rest, but what does it even mean? Well, if you say the square root of negative one is i, then all of math becomes harmonious. So the traditional variable, and I'm not sure, this is probably some German word or something, is to use the letter Z, is to say that Z is one particular number and it's made out of a real part, real part, and you remember, you've seen me do this a lot, real is an R with a slash through it, and the imaginary part, imaginary part up there with the I. So um, for example, we might have the number Z is equal to three plus four i. Now what we're gonna do, mind blown, is we're going to graph real numbers left and right and imaginary numbers up and down, okay? So we've got an axis that is no longer gonna be the x-axis. This is the real axis. And we've got an axis up here that is no longer the y-axis, it's the imaginary axis. So three plus four i would be three in the real part and four in the imaginary part. So there's where our z is gonna lie right there. What's this number right here? Well, that dot is got no real part. The left and right is zero. The up and down is negative two. So that must be the number negative two i. What would this part, uh, this number over here be? Well, it's got no imaginary part. There's no up and down, but the left and right is negative three. So that's just our old friend negative three. You see how this works. We're just graphing reals left and right and imaginaries up and down. Why is this in this section of the math book? Why are we talking about it in this chapter on polar? Because there was a French guy, and I'll see if I can put his picture here, named de Mouvray, who said, uh, along with a bunch of other mathematicians, let's do these instead of in rectangular, let's do them in polar. Instead of going A over and B up, let's turn angle theta and then walk out distance R. Let's do what we've been doing with polar, but now we're going to do it with complex numbers. Okay? So our number here of 3 plus uh, 4i is 3 uh, to the right and 4 up meaning that the hypotenuse, you see why I picked these numbers, is five. So that's gonna be our R, and in some older textbooks, this is called the absolute value, well, and in some math books, this is called the absolute value of the imaginary number. How far is it from the origin? And so that's 
z in absolute value bars. And then in order to find angle theta, I'm going to need to do arctan 4 thirds. Arctan 4 thirds is 53.13 ish degrees. Okay? So everything we've been doing with polar, you can find uh, R and theta given A and B. And you can go the other way, of course, like we've been doing. You could say that, well, sine of theta is, uh, let's see here, it's opposite over hypotenuse, so that's uh, B over R, and cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. So then solving for A and B, we get that A equals R cos theta, and B equals R sine theta, okay? So that's everything we've been doing with polar, going back and forth between uh, A and B, in this case, instead of X and Y, A and B and R and theta. Easy squeezy. This is where the next level part comes in. This is some next level thinking here, is that they said, all right, so we've got complex numbers of the form A plus BI. This means that uh, we can convert them into polar, and we said, following these equations up here, that A is R cos theta, and B is R sine theta, and we still had that I. Now, mathematicians are lazy. They are the best kind of lazy, the one that saves effort and doesn't lose any information. How can we be lazy in a good way? Well, everybody here has got an R, so we're gonna take that out, and we're gonna be left with cos theta plus, and I'm gonna move the I over, I sine theta. Do you ever listen to rap music? I love rap music from the South. The accent, the way they say the words, don't be scared up in her and all that kind of talk. It's amazing. It's just a gorgeous, beautiful, weird, crazy accent. And there is a Christian rapper, I think he's gone on to be a pastor now, named Trip Lee. And he has got this word that he said the other day that just, I love it. He said, waint. He said, uh, and, and the reason I love it is because as soon as he said it, I knew exactly what he meant, and I knew that it had two apostrophes in it, which is awesome. It means um, we do not. We ain't. Um, and that's just, that's awesome. Wayne, it, it, in his particular lyric, it was really awesome. It was, we ain't got to worry about the thang. Jesus is the king of the kings. And, and this accent, this way of talking. I mean, what a useful, awesome, intelligent contraction to be able to take the words down that far. And here, mathematicians, they totally pulled a weint. They totally said, you know what? I'm not, I'm too lazy to write this theta angle twice, so I'm not even gonna. I'm not gonna write it twice. I'm, they made an acronym where they said, let's take the C and the I and the S and let's call it C-I-S of theta. So this is pronounced cis, um, like a sibling that's a girl, and you're, it, it is not a new trig function. There aren't seven trig functions. There's still only six. It's a abbreviation, like NATO, uh, that stands for cosine theta plus I sine theta. And we'll need to expand that back out and use that abbreviation sometimes. So the, um, the, the usefulness then is to say, all right, we said that this particular Z was three plus four I, and having found R and theta, we can now write that same number as five cis 53.13. That this cis format is just a polar way of writing a complex number. It means turn the angle, walk out the distance, same as we've always done. In fact, it's even better than the polar that we've been doing this chapter because they're only going to ever have positive radii when we use polar coordinates of complex numbers. So, this new system, this new world that de Mouvray and others invented and, and found in math is not as good as rectangular for addition and subtraction. If, if you want to add three plus four i and you want to add to that two i, well, it's real obvious how to add two i or subtract one minus i from it. And things like that are still gonna be more straightforward. 
that's something that rectangular has going for it. But it turns out that multiplication and division and exponents and roots are all a billion times easier in polar forms, in cis form, than they are in rectangular. So let's, let's, let's practice a couple numbers quick here first, just to make sure that you get what I'm saying. So let's, let's do some examples. Let's say, what is 3 plus 3i, convert that into cis, and what is 2 cis 120, convert that into a plus bi. All right, so 3 plus 3i, that is gonna be three units over this way and three units up that way. We're up there at three plus three I. Well, if we go over as much as we go up, the angle in there must be 45 degrees. So that's a uh, cis of 45. And then if we've got three and three, then Pythagoras tells us that the hypotenuse must be three root two. So that's three root two cis 45. And you can double check that with Pythagoras and Arctan if you really want. Going the other way at a cis of 120, somewhere off like that, and going two units out, that number right there, two cis 120, that's gonna be a little bit more tricky. Now you might be able to see the triangle, the reference triangle to draw right there, but I'm gonna go ahead and expand this and remember that it's a, a contraction, we ain't gotta worry about a thing, that this is cosine 120 plus I sine 120. And cos 120 is the same as negative cos 60, so that's negative half. And uh, sine of 120 is the same as sine 60, so that's root 3 over 2. Okay, so now that means that I get, distribute the 2, I get negative 1 plus i root 3. Okay, so I hope you see how we can convert these. Now, the last thing that I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you what I've been saying, why this is better, why cis is something that you would want to have, and I'm gonna demonstrate how it makes multiplication better. Let's take two imaginary complex numbers. They're gonna be z1 and z sub two. These are gonna be our numbers, and they each have their own particular radius and their own particular angle, so r2 and cis theta sub two, and we're gonna to wanna to find what is z sub one times z sub 2. Now, if you were going to do this in a plus bi form, you would have to foil it all out and do things in a long, complicated way. And you would need to use the trick, which we will need here too as well in just a second, but only once, is that i squared equals negative 1. That's the definition of i. It's the root of negative 1. Now, I'm going to prove to you what z1 times z2 is, and you don't need to do this proof over and over again, but I do want to show you that it shows why polar is better. So if we're multiplying z1 times z2, that's the same as r sub 1 cis theta 1 times r sub 2 cis theta sub 2. And because it's multiplication, because everybody is multiplying, I can just group things and put the radiuses, the radii together and the cisses together. Now, those radii are just numbers, so that's just straight up multiplying. There's nothing super spectacular for us to do there. But, and now this is the scary part. This is gonna get big, don't, don't be scared, but it will clean up. I'm gonna go ahead and expand those two cisses. That cis theta one stands for cosine theta one plus i sine theta one. And cis theta 2 stands for cos theta 2 plus i sine theta 2. Okay? Now, look out. I'm going to go ahead and multiply these. But hold on. Jesus is good. God is good all the time. And all the time God is good. This will work out. This will be okay. So let's do uh, this part here. That is going to be cos theta 1, cos theta 2. And then let's do the this part right there. That's going to be i times i is i squared, and then sine theta 1, sine theta 2. 
that wasn't so bad. Now, what, would it, what did we just say that I squared was? I squared is negative one, so I can turn that into a minus sign. Now, do you feel a little song coming on here when you're looking at this? What's the song? Cosine, cosine, sine, sine. Yeah, yeah, what is that? What is that? What is the cosine conga for? It's the cosine sum of angles. So all this crazy mess right here is just cosine of theta one plus theta two that we can just simplify all of that down. All right, now, we did not do two of the other terms. We need to still do uh, this one over here and this one out there. Okay, so uh, put that to one side. Let's do these other ones. Let's do um, I sine theta one cosine theta two. And okay, so that was the first term and the, the inners. And then the outers, I'm going to write the I first, and that's uh, cosine theta 1, sine theta 2. Now, what do these two have in common? Well, they've all got an I, so I'm going to take that I out. I don't want to look at that. Let's say theta 1, cos theta 2, plus cos theta 1, sine theta 2. What's that? You singing the song? You're singing it sine, cosine, and a cosine, sine. See? It's the sine sum of angles. It's a sine of theta 1 plus theta 2. And we had cosine of theta 1 plus theta 2. And what is that? Well, we just said we ain't got to worry about a thing that when you have cosine plus I sine of the same angle, that's cis. That is what cis was invented for, that this is cis theta 1 plus theta 2, and I have need to bring back r1, r2. What did we just prove? What is this just saying? In, in ordinary speech, we're saying when you want to multiply two polar complex numbers, you multiply their radii and you add their angles. That's all you have to do. That's what multiplication is, to just multiply the radii and add the angles. Ah, oh, so cool. So I will uh, stop here. I'm gonna have another video about um, division and exponents and roots of complex numbers, but look at the book. This is gonna be awesome. This is gonna be amazing. It's going to get even better. See you next time.